Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here, get ready for Gnosis. We're going to talk about Dr. William Bengston's uh, visualization method called cycling. Now, uh, Bengston has done amazing research now for 30 years on what can be called general manifesting with an emphasis on hands-on healing, which once you get into his research, there's nothing hands-on about it, and it turns into a complete uh, energy transfer uh, through basically just getting a process going. And it's been so successful, he's cured many people of all sorts of diseases and cancers, etc. And of course, like everything, he's not 100% successful, and there's certain conditions that don't work too well for him that he's able to cure. Uh, one of those is diabetes. And, uh, but he's cured people of cancers and other things. It's quite amazing. But the whole idea is he's been able to prove the transfer of energetic informational fields to um, individuals and animals and research to uh, make dramatic changes. And how do you measure? Well, it's very hard to measure uh, success energies, but it is easy to measure whether a particular person or a mouse is healed from a particular cancer. So, pretty easy. It either works or doesn't. So, it's a very complicated system. We highly recommend his book, The Energy Cure, uh, by William Bengston, a PhD. He also has an audio course everyone should get and study because this is information uh, that teaches you a system of manifesting. You can use his system for anything. Uh, uh, curing illness is just a type of manifestation. So what are the um, very important factors to all this? Well, I'll tell you right now, the important factors to all this is the actual um, manifesting or sending energy for any particular reason to any particular person. Um, while it's more um, difficult to manifest other things with people because they block certain intentions, like if you want to influence them or get them to buy your product or uh, assist them in some other way um, is different about healing, which you assume with most people is something they welcome in. But let's get into a very unique part of his training, which I've never seen before. The core of his training is visualization. Oh, what a surprise that is. I've been teaching this for years. Uh, the two cores to manifestation are centering, meaning you are in a certain mental mindset, um, a uh, consciousness state all the time, so you make all the right decisions, which are not based on emotions or outside influences. Well, this is part of his system indirectly. But the other part of his system is uh, visualization. Now, he has a unique way of visualizing called cycling. And I've never really seen this technique before. I've studied every type of visualization, and I do have um, uh, tools that assist people in learning how to visualize. One thing he seems to forget with his cycling system is the fact that people can't visualize, period. So to use a visualization technique is pretty much a waste of time until you've opened up the empowerment streams within your consciousness and actually work with uh, visualization development tools. You have to develop visualizations and take time to make sure that you are good at that and have very clear visualized images. This means exact, crystal clear. Junk in, junk out. Now, only 1% of the population really visualizes at a decent level uh, where they can actually manifest with. Everybody else struggles and hits it and is on and off, and most people claim they can't visualize at all. Um, this is very, very common. I've been teaching for 50 years, or 40 years technically. Um, I've been teaching for 40 years, and the biggest gripe with everybody is they can't visualize. So, uh, and this is really the beginning of everything. You can't visualize, you're not going to manifest well. Simple as that. There's been people that come up with different methods. There's people using vision boards, one-dimensional images, photographs of what you want. Well, this is a better start, but it's very poor because uh, your consciousness doesn't really understand flat images. It doesn't seem real to them. So the mind doesn't take flat images very real. 
uh, why watching TV and doing so many other things while may get you emotionally involved because you're all encompassed with the eyes and the images and depending how big the TV is, but it's not real at a very deep level. So even though it can uh, evoke emotions, etc. So um, that's the big problem with his visualization system because he just tells you, you know, uh, to take a lot of time, get clear visualizations down, and he wants you to have a minimum of 20 items that you desire personally and selfishly want. So, and a lot of uh, he claims that it's difficult to do that. I'm not sure it is if people um, think about what they want in life. So, when it gets down to um, basic possessions, don't you want that fancy car, those shoes, that giant TV screen. I'm not sure that's all that difficult to come up with 20 things, but he claims that in his courses this was difficult. And he claims the more the better. So, um, and I think initially people may think that that's difficult because you've just shows you how poorly manifesting based you are. There's a whole series of things that we all want in life, and it could be something that is inexpensive, something that's emotional, something that is physical that you desire to have more of or want in general. And if you put these down, I would think you'd have lots and lots there. But he claims that is difficult for most people to come up with 20 items they really want. And the highest level was somebody who wanted 91 of something. I just think he was uh, just being more honest. Um, but what he does is you get these and he says make clear but how do you do that the big problem with his system is you're not using visualization physical tools to develop your skills uh, I have designed a whole series of these after 40 years of research that assist people in actually doing this so uh, very very critically important doing stuff strictly from a book and practicing them doesn't work well you need to be physically involved life is not about what's on the chalkboard life is what happens when you step out of the classroom and start applying the information that you've learned and that's why any good teaching has classroom discussions but then you start doing internships if you're a psychologist you start talking to people uh, you go to places to discuss people who have problems if you're a doctor you start going and becoming an intern seeing what cases are there what's going on etc this is exactly how you learn you don't learn from actual books alone and basically you learn very little from books because as everybody knows what's in books and what's in the real world tends to be radically different. So uh, you need to have physical tools and he seems to have missed the boat here. Again, nobody wants to make physical tools. They don't want to have the time putting them together, uh, etc. So this is why this tends to happen. People can easily make books or DVDs. Well, these are mass marketed. When you want to actually put together tools, well, this becomes a process which is too complicated for people that are doing other things. And now in IGS Success Tech, uh, this is what we do. So we have lots of physical tools uh, that we make um, and offer to people because this is critical. It's critical for you to learn to have physical tools. Everything can't be this nebulous um, mental energy. You need something to hold on to, to grasp, to touch. This is all part of the entire empowerment process. And when you start doing this just on a mental level, it becomes very weak, boring, and ultimately loses a lot of power, except for a few people that can alter their consciousness to get into this. But why bother doing that? Even if you're good at it, you can reach higher, better levels quickly by using uh, visualization psychic development tools. So getting back to his system. Now his system does by you get these crystal clear images. You spend time doing this. He wants you to spend time, get it clear in your mind, get the visualization clear. So he's right in this area if you were able to do that, which is um, interesting unto itself. And of course, you know, it's always good to have three-dimensional images of anything. And part of visualization is touching, feeling, and getting out of vision and getting it directly connected into your inner magical being, your higher self. And this is done through touching and feeling and using psychic empowerments, not just uh, thinking of a picture. And you have to think of pictures that in a three-dimensional fashion, which is why I always recommend people that, you know, if you have a car you want, go out and buy yourself a little uh, matchbox car or Hot Wheels of a similar type car. Uh, have something physically in front of you. Your mind relates to that. A picture of a car sucks. So, 
So what he does is he has this very unique system, which I'm not entirely sure what to make of. I, the more that I allowed it to think about it here now for about 60 days, um, may be a very good way of visualizing, which is uh, what he calls cycling. Now, cycling serves two purposes. Now, the reason why it says cycling is you're supposed to visualize as fast as you possibly can. So you start going through these visualizations that you have a list of at least 20, because if it's less than that, it becomes a problem, where it's faster and faster seeing the image. Now, I'm not sure, and he claims you do it at kind of super warp speeds. It's just cycling so fast, um, and you supposedly, or our consciousness is able to handle that because you can take in so much data. Uh, and the bind does work with huge amounts of data, but I'm not sure it works with huge amounts of clear, specific data uh, that um, Bengston thinks it does. But what he's trying to do here in a bigger picture here is to use visualization for an egotistical personal level, so you're involved in it. But mostly what it's doing is he's kind of trancing you out because he doesn't want you involved in the psychic healing projection. He wants you to get out of the way, or he wants the conscious mind to be uh, the toxic sewer mind, as I call it. He wants that out of the way because that stops manifesting. Well, he's 100% right there. It stops the transfer of healing energies. It stops uh, the manifesting energies in general. Anytime your mind gets involved, it pushes out of the way your inner magical being or your higher self, which makes everything manifest. Yet it is hardly ever used in our life because our life is not about manifesting in terms of day-to-day -day activities. It's about cooking, cleaning, washing, scrubbing, going to work, driving. So why would your active inner magical being mind be manifesting what? What are you manifesting when you're driving to work or doing whatever you're doing at work? Well, you're really not manifesting anything. You're doing a task. Um, and your higher self only really has a certain small activity involved in that. When uh, the, your higher self is at its best is when it's trying to grab things that are beyond your grasp, which isn't driving down a road or even driving safely down a road. It's creating a road. It's not using roads. So this is where it comes in because this is a very advanced supercomputer that you basically take your supercomputer and you're saying, well, I want to use you as a calculator. One plus one is two. Two plus two is four. This is what you're taking a soup. So the supercomputer just says, oh, okay, forget about this. So it just turns itself off. So what he's trying to do here by super cycling is trying to get that very toxic mind. Who's, this is what your mind's doing all the time, which I'm not sure is good to further that energy um, because it hypens yourself up. But what he's doing is hyping yourself up to take care of these high capacities because your mind is running that fast really poorly. It's very bad for you for your mind to run like that. You have to turn the mind off. But what he's doing is channeling that energy into creating a turning off of your common toxic mind and going into a semi-trance so that your higher self can do the work. So it is interesting, and I think there may be something to it. I'm not sure I would go past 20 manifestations in general, uh, getting more and more. I'm not sure that's really good. I'm not sure that filling up your senses like this is, um, but I certainly can see, and uh, once you try this technique and you do it for 20 items, I mean, you can do this throughout your day, focusing on your desires and spin, spin. Boom, 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 boom. You're going through these and you're projecting energy at a particular target, um, all the time. And this is, of course, what I recommend in general and what we do using our manifesting energy cells, which have this energy in it, is that you connect with it constantly uh, because you're constantly reaffirming in your consciousness, activating your higher self, your inner magical being, uh, to manifest. So you can do this in some ways with his particular system called cycling, which means you do this super, super. And he thinks you should do it faster and faster. The more, the faster you get. But you're not, I'm not sure you can really, I've tried this technique, but there's no way that you can visualize something, um, hundreds of images within a tenth of a second, clearly or not. So as I said, that's not really helping visualization. Can you do it quickly? Yes. And I'm a big fan of quick and fast um, my basic system of learning is do things at high intensity, which is kind of what cycling is because you got to do this very fast for short periods of time. Of course, doing super fast does that often. 
and you can do that with this system as well. So it fits into my guidelines of what works, and I know what works, uh, and I've been doing it for over 40 years. So this system is interesting. I'm not sure that you can visualize that quickly and just have something spinning. Now, uh, he says people visualize uh, movie films, uh, like you had a, I don't know if real real films, and you spin those, and you go real fast. I mean, that's what a movie projector it is. It's a certain amount of frames per second. Or a Rolodex. I don't know. Does anybody remember Rolodexes? But the whole idea is it's a round uh, card file. It's on a round, um, like a wheel, and you have uh, cards on it. And you see people spin this as fast as they can, and you're making out. But you're only making out images. I'm not sure you can uh, make out clear uh, images uh, when you're doing something extremely fast. So we need to um, fully understand uh, that is the system he does. Now, the whole idea of zzz all the time in your mind um, will create a certain altered th uh, thought pattern. Um, and then you start to really think like that. You're, you're, you're moving too fast through things. And I'm not sure in the long run how great the system is. But if you, you, if you slow it down a bit, you use uh, much lower level cycling, meaning slower, and you don't really use more than 20 images at a time, um, which he uh, wants to be minimum. And I agree with that because you have to have 20 different things if you're going to cycle, meaning doing something fast, uh, would be fine. But you want to clearly see the pictures and how fast that can go. Well, you can continue to pick up the pace. But if things start to get into a blurred image, well, you're kind of defeating it. It becomes, well, I'm empowering my visualizations is what it comes down to. So you're just giving the intention to that. And of course, I'm sure that's what he really believes because he's big into just getting the process done. The details of it, your higher self take care of. Uh, you don't need to clearly visualize. You know what those uh, visualization images are. So you're just kind of going through them consistently, meaning you're basically just repeating an affirmation all the time. I want what my visualizations are. I know what they are, and I'm just triggering that process by moving it very quickly. It certainly is an interesting system. And I think it's a system that a lot of people like because their minds are going super fast anyway. Now, again, I don't see anything necessarily wrong with that. What is wrong is when you slow things down to a point that you allow your mind to come in and start giving you all sorts of garbage thoughts. It's going to just feed you garbage. So if you concentrate on a visualized thing for too long, your mind comes in and says, yeah, is that right? This is good. You'll never get all the nonsense comes in. So this is why we are very much against spending any kind of time on things. So this is where doing things at high intensity, meaning you're really into it and believe in it, short periods of time, and this can be seconds. We do this with the use and transfer of energies as two seconds at the most. One, one thousand, two, that's it, you're done. And of course, that's exactly what he's kind of doing with his visualization. So we've kind of came to the same conclusion, and I just about agree with him on most of everything. Um, but I'm not sure endless images and having this spinning all the time uh, is ultimately the best way to go. But certainly, uh, he's certainly on track here, and I think everyone has to modify this uh, that works best for them. And again, of course, the final principle is do things often, which, of course, you can do if a system is very quickly uh, performed. So, and this is how we work. Nobody wants to spend a lot of time doing things. And it's also come down to the fact, is it really needed? Well, I don't think it is because your your wander your wandering mind replaces the time that you want to spend doing something practical, turns it into garbage. So it's counterproductive. So it's an interesting system. Everybody should get uh, the Energy Cure by Bengston, William Bengston, PhD. He also has a DVD CD course, which I highly recommend. Uh, these books can be gotten uh, in many places at used prices for very low, and even his courses can be gotten uh, pretty inexpensively. So no one should be without this training and the understanding of what he's talking about here, because this is success. Uh, uh, tech at its best. This is how all things are manifested and he's got to it kind of indi uh, indirectly and he mentions it basically uh, that you could use this for anything but you know he's into healing and this is of course what everybody needs and generally um, doesn't get you into trouble um, if you're into healing. 
and if you take particularly his approach and you're not using gadgets or other things he also talks about materials that hold energy very fascinating stuff i've never heard before so everybody check that out and get involved and uh, i would do a modified method of this cycling of course training yourself first you got to get clear images in there and if you're not training yourself using uh, visualization tools well it's really not going to work well for you so I think everybody needs to fully understand that until next time remember everyone there is no reality until the manifesting scientist creates it